you turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 2? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. That as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know all things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words, let me say this again, not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You know, the Lord took me on a journey, and uh, it was like going scuba diving and going into a whole other world. And, you know, you see all these different colored fish and all of these corals and all these wonderful things, and it's like... <gasps> Where do you begin? You want to talk about this and you want to talk about that. And it was so overwhelming to me that I didn't know if I could be able to put what he wants to express into words. And he says here that the deep things of God are revealed by the Spirit of God. And God is trying to bring us into another place and such a place where it isn't about words. It's about being so one with Him that you know, that you know, that you know. It says in verse 14, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So the natural man will not be able to comprehend. Not without the Spirit of God. Now we know that there's a great awakening going on. And the thing is, and it's true, it's awakening because people have been asleep. The Lord showed me a spirit-filled believer. He said a spirit-filled believer still doesn't know how to walk in the other realm. And I said, well, then what's going on? He said a spirit-filled believer, the purpose of getting spirit-filled is to bring him to the door. Because without being spirit-filled, you can't even get to the other door. I said, whoa. And when I, he showed me this story, he said, when this, when, when you are spirit filled and you, this being spirit filled gets you to the door. When you get to that door, it's a whole nother realm. It's a whole nother world. Everything is different. It's a place not by words. It's the deep things. And he began explaining to me about the realms. You know, we're, we're accustomed to two realms, the spiritual, in the physical. But there's another realm called the eternal. And the eternal is in the spiritual, but it's still a different realm than the spiritual. It's called eternal. I thought, whoa! Because it only handles the eternal presence of God. See, and this is what we so desire. The eternal presence of God. Turn to Genesis 1. I mean, you want to go scuba diving. <laughs> diving in the spirit you know some of these things we've talked about already but I believe it it's like a whole other different revelation of what's going on in Genesis 1 1 are you all there it's right in the beginning of the book <laughs> hopefully it says in the beginning God created the what heavens and the earth so the first thing that God created was what time Everybody see that? It says, in the beginning, God created the what? Heavens and the earth. Heavens representation of spiritual, earth representation of matter or natural. But the first thing he created, because it says, in the beginning, he created time. Somebody understand that? Time. So he created time and space. Now, I want to share with you what space is. It's a place where time is inhabited by matter purpose, or event. Space is a place 
where time is inhabited by matter, purpose, or event directed by its author or who we call God, creator. Now we know that the heavens were created first, which is the spirit realm, and the earth or the natural realm was created second. But in the spiritual realm, there is an eternal realm or what we might consider call a, an eternal presence in the eternal realm in which God dwells in those in whom he elects to dwell with him. It's an eternal presence in the eternal realm. Would you turn to Revelation 21? Remember where there's a beginning, there's a what? End. The heavens mean spiritual realm, right? The earth means what? Natural realm. But then there's an eternal realm in representation of the eternal presence of God. In Revelation 21, start at verse 1. Would you read it with me? John, who had a visitation from the Lord, who wrote the book of Revelations. Revelation means being able to what? See. And he wrote this and he said, Now I saw a what? New heaven and a what? New earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for former things have what? Passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is what? Done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I think we heard this before, didn't we? What did Jesus say on the cross? It is done. It is finished. Oh. See, he was saying it was finished. That's why the veil ripped, so that you can have access to the eternal presence. You understand? And on here he says it is finished, so the eternal presence was having access also to men. The whole tabernacle. There was a new heaven and a new, new, earth, new earth. In other words, all the spiritual realm was gone. All the natural realm is gone. That's all that was left, was the eternal presence of God. Are you with me? And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. And he who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So we see here that there will be a new heaven and there will be a new earth. The only thing that will last is the eternal presence. That's what's waiting for me and you. And that's what God is trying to get us to access now. Are you hearing? See, but it says something powerful. He says he goes to prepare a place for those who follow him. He goes to prepare. That means he's been here already. When God prepares a place, that means he's already gone and done it. Are you hearing me? The Bible says that we live and have our being in God. So we are in God, aren't we? But there's multiple presence of God. There's the existing presence of God. There's the power presence of God and there's the eternal presence of God. And then that eternal presence is where God is wanting to have access now. Are you hearing? Go to Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. And verse uh, 11. Ezekiel 28, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take a lamentation up for the king of Tyra and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. Now you know he's not talking about a natural king. 
For you are the seal of perfection. You know, he wasn't talking about no man. <laughs> Full of wisdom and perfect in what? Beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. <laughs> Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz, diamond, braille, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Now, you know he's talking about Lucifer, who was the praise and worship leader of the universe. Okay? He was known as the king of Tyra there. He was called Lucifer. It says that you were in Eden, the garden of God. God prepared a place on the earth. Even Lucifer was in the garden of Eden before Adam and Eve were. You and I label it now Garden of Eden. But in the original creation, we didn't. there was no names for it. Are you with me? And it was a place where Lucifer was, the mountain of God was known as the earth. That's where praise and worship would go out. And God would meet with them in what we now call the Garden of Eden. Lucifer had work, he, the workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. In verse 14, you notice he was dressed with all the stones of the earth because of his ruleship, of his authority here. Now, man wasn't created yet. Remember, the heavens were created first. And the earth was inhabited by sons of God, known as angels. He said, you are the anointed cherub who covers. Covers what? Covers the universe with God's praise. I establish you. You were on the mountain of God. What was the mountain, the holy mountain of God? The earth at that time. It's a representation also of his throne. You walk back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. How could he do that? Because he was here when creation of the earth was being established. You were perfect in all of your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was what? Found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within your and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God or out of the eternal presence. He was first removed from the eternal presence of God. See, Lucifer has, does not have access to the eternal presence of God unless God allows it. But he's in the spirit realm, isn't he? You understand? So there's the eternal presence of God in the spirit realm. But you must have access to that. In fact, if you notice that during the time of kings, you could not just get before a king. You had to have access into the court. And if the king set his scepter towards you, you could come in or else you died. He said that you were cast out of the mountain of God and I destroyed you, O covering cherub. So we know that he's speaking about things that will what? Come. From the midst of the fiery stones, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. Natural realm. These are things to come. I lay you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you. And we know that the Bible tells us that Lucifer will be devoured by the fire of God in the final event. I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. And all who knew you among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. So we see here that Lucifer was the praise and worship leader. He was involved in the eternal presence of God. The eternal presence of God was established, allowed and brought forth as a mountain of God on the earth. And God would speak to his people, what we call now, to the angels and so forth, to the Garden of Eden. Now remember, Lucifer was the praise and worship leader of the universe. He brought in the presence of the eternal God. Are you hearing me? Okay, good. Now go to Isaiah 14. But then Lucifer was removed from the eternal presence, wasn't he? 
but he was sent to the earth, but not in the natural realm. He was sent in the, still in the spirit realm. Are you hearing me? Is Lucifer an angel? Yeah. Isaiah 14, in verse something. Let's see. 12. How you all fallen from heaven. What heaven is he talking about? The eternal presence. Because we know that Lucifer is still in the spirit realm, isn't he? But one day he's going to be removed even from the spirit realm. And all of his hosts. O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into what? Heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. In other words, he's saying, I'm going to go above the eternal presence. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the most high. How many eyes did he have here? One, two, three, four, five. Three eyes and you're out. I don't know how he got away with two more. And the Lord's response was, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, which means hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you all consider you saying, this is the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners, all the kings and the nations and all of them slept in glory, everyone in his own house. But you are cast out of your grave. In other words, God ain't going to let them die in that way. Like an abominable branch, like a garment of those who are slain, thrust through with the sword of the Spirit, who go down to the stones of the pit, like a corpse trotting underfoot, you will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land and slain your people and brought of evildoers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his children. Lucifer's children are called dogs because of the iniquity of their fathers lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the world with cities. In other words, expand Satan's kingdoms. Are you hearing me? So we see here again and how the word confirms itself. Satan was destroyed by the sword of the spirit or the fire of God. Satan's children are called dogs, so they can't rebuild. He wanted to destroy them. This fall set the first stage of God's removal of eternal presence on the earth. When Lucifer fell, God removed his eternal presence from the earth. And the earth became void. Are you hearing? That's verse 2 in Genesis 1. I said it became void and null, no good, but darkness was on the deep of the earth because the Lord had sent him where? Into hell, right? He was sentenced to the earth. So we see here, this is the first stage of God's removal of the eternal presence on the earth, the mountain of God. Sentencing Satan's to the earth and the atmosphere, preparing it to be restored and inhabited with new keepers, made in his image and likeness. So when the Spirit of the Lord came back to hover over the earth to restore it, God was already in process of <laughs> creating man to become now the keepers of the kingdom of darkness. Are you hearing? Because he was getting ready to restore his what? His eternal presence there. I'll go to Genesis one twenty six. In verse 26, what does it say? Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So we see here God was creating man to now become the keepers of Satan's kingdom. Now, remember that Satan, who was Lucifer was removed from the eternal presence of God. In other words, he was going to die. We read that there would be a new heaven and a new earth. In other words, even all the things of the spirit realm will come to an end, except for those who God will allow into the eternal presence. Anything that is not of the eternal presence of God will not live. Are you hearing 
I didn't say in the spirit. I said in the eternal presence. Okay. So we know now God is creating man in his image and likeness. Uh, God cannot reproduce himself. Well, I thought you said God can do all things. He can, but you can't reproduce something that was and isn't always was. In other words, God cannot reproduce himself. He just can't produce something that always was. It's impossible. Are, are you hearing me? Okay. Well, well, then how did his son come? That's God. He's God. Jesus was God. The spirit is God. The word is God. So, But God cannot reproduce. You can't reproduce something that already is. So he can never duplicate himself. Do you get this? See, so... Because he is. He's the eternal presence. We live and have our being in him. Yes, the word became flesh. Called Jesus. It was still God. You can't reproduce Jesus. But he can express himself. Through his creation. That's why when he created Adam and Eve, he said, make them in our image and likeness. Because he couldn't reproduce himself but he can make him in the image and likeness. So he took matter, didn't he? But in this realm, God restored. Remember, God not only restored the earth in six days and rested on the seventh, but he also restored his eternal presence. Hello? So when he created Adam and Eve, his eternal presence was with them. They were eternal. So, in the eternal presence is the spirit realm. Okay, so the eternal presence was in the spirit realm. Are you hearing? That's why they were able to see. That's why they could see the serpent. They had dominion over the serpent. They had dominion. They held the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Adam and Eve. Why? Because what did Satan's kingdom produce? Death. Are you you understanding that? So Adam and Eve were now the keepers. That's what God was training them up for. Adam and Eve was God's offspring to maintain the things that he created. Let's go to verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So he gave them dominion, didn't he? They named the animals. They named everything. Right? God brought everything to them. Now where were they? In the garden of what? Eden. The same place that God used to meet with Lucifer and the angels... God met now with Adam and Eve, except for Lucifer was in a cage. (laughs) He was bound. He was sentenced to the earth in the atmosphere. And he threw down a third of his angels that were also sentenced with him. So they were all under the authority and dominion now of Adam and Eve, who are walking in the image and likeness of God, who created Lucifer. Remember, Lucifer was God's right-hand man. But he came against him. God removed him from the eternal presence, sent him to the earth. That was his sentence. But then he created man in his image and likeness to give them as keepers of the kingdom of darkness to have dominion over them, to reestablish the eternal presence on the earth. Are you with me? (laughs) So Adam and Eve were eternal beings made from matter, seen in the spiritual realm. Are you understanding that? But yet living in a natural realm. (laughs) Because they were living on something that God created called matter. But you and I call it natural, don't we? We call it a natural. But see, it wasn't like the natural realm that you and I know it. Because nothing was dying. When you bite an apple now, it turns brown. Things weren't dying. Things were eternal. Why? Because the eternal presence was here then. 
Adam and Eve held the keys. God gave them dominion and authority of everything. They held a key that would either unlock or keep locked Satan's kingdom. When Adam and Eve talk with God, they talk with him. Are you hearing? They saw him. Because they were part of the eternal presence. In Genesis 3, in verse 1, Not a serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, As God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. In other words, then you'll lose the eternal presence. Then the serpent said to the woman, Ah, oh, come on. You're not going to die. God's a liar. <laughs> For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God. Well, they already like God. So they made him in his likeness, image and likeness, right? Knowing good and evil. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a desire, and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit, ate. She also gave to her husband, and he ate. And the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked. What had happened was the eternal presence of God left them. That's what they were clothed in, the eternal presence of God. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden, cool of the day. They what? They heard. They no longer saw. Because their eyes were open to the realm of death and shut to the realm of life. So they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said, Where are you? I love this. Like he didn't know where he was, you know. He was checking him out. So he said, I heard your voice. In other words, I, you know, it was almost like the Lord saying, Adam, why can't you see me? Adam, where are you? Why can't you see me? And he was hiding. And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid. Satan's power is what? Fear. And his weapon is what? Deception. Because I was naked. Why? Because the eternal presence of God left him. And I hid myself, and he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? So the eternal presence of God, life was removed from them. But not only was life removed from Adam and Eve, but their authority and dominion was taken by Satan. The keys were given back to Satan. You understand that? So now death, hell, and the grave now reigned on the earth. The eternal presence was no longer. Everything on the earth became dead. Anything that was born into the earth was going to die. Anything that grew was going to die. Everything was run by the spirit of death. Prince of power of air. Everything was going to die. No matter what. There wasn't anything that could happen except for the eternal presence Come back and restore all things. And Second Corinthians chapter 4. From that point on, mankind was born blinded to the spirit realm. Not even knowing anything about the eternal presence of God. Second Corinthians 4. Is everybody okay? Verse 16. Therefore we what? We do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, 
but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, and the things which are not seen are eternal. So we see that, now we see that we, the things that we see is a temporary realm, the things we don't see is an eternal realm. Go to the next verse. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, or the eternal presence. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. Why? Because it was lost from with Adam and Eve. So we groan to be more inhabited. Do you understand that? Even though we're saved and spirit-filled, we still, knew, still do not carry the eternal habitation yet. We carry the spirit of Christ, which is the eternal presence, but we are not clothed yet. Are you hearing like Adam and Eve were. So we groan because the inward wants to have communion with the outward. <laughs> so we groan. We go, man, we want to shed our flesh. We want to shed this earthly temple to be reunited with our true habitation, the eternal presence of God. Uh, for in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven, if indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found what? Naked, just like Adam and Eve. For we who are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but what? Further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who what? Prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, which is our real home. For we walk by faith, which is our connection with the other side, through the Spirit. Not by sight, because the sight is the temporary realm. We are confident, yes, well, please, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord, which is our true home. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to God. Things that are seen are temporary. Things that are not seen are eternal. Adam and Eve lost the eternal habitation or what we call the presence that clothed them. The Christ, the eternal presence came into the world to restore mankind to the original state. God prepared these things or predestined these things. I want to share something important because there's a place where God wants us to be able to walk not bound by space and time. Because if you are eternal, you are not bound by time or space. When Moses walked into the eternal presence of God, he was there for 40 days and 40 nights and didn't even know it. He thought he was there five minutes and left. And Lord said, take off those shoes, you're on holy ground. Not because they stunk. Do you hear? Because it was a total different realm. It was called the eternal presence. Not just a spirit realm, it was the eternal presence of God where he said, take those shoes off. Well, you're going to stand on the eternal presence is different than standing in the spirit realm. Does everybody get it? And in this, God wants us to be able to move in the spirit realm, not bound by space and time. If you think about it, the prophets were time travelers. Not that they were traveling in time, because in that realm, there is no time. But they were able to see things to come. John, on the island of Patmos, who wrote the book of Revelation by the Spirit of God, was able to see things in the past, in the present, and in the future, because he was not bound by time. And that's where God is bringing his church right now. That's why there's an awakening going on. There's an awakening. And there's a place that you can access now that he's allowed it. Remember, getting spirit-filled brings you to the door of the eternal presence of God. We are no longer bound by space and time. Were you able to see the things that were, that are, and are to come? See, so you're actually omnipresent with God. And Jesus paid that price for you. But you know what? Nobody, not many, use it. Okay, let's go a little further. You want to go a little further? Go to Ephesians chapter 1. 
I had to lay a foundation for this. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1. Are you ready now? Saddle up. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every what? Spiritual blessing where? In heavenly places where? In Christ. Where in Christ is the eternal presence. Wow. Come on, go a little further. Hold on. Just as he chose us in him before the what? Foundation of the world. So you were with him before anything was created. What? That's right. Remember, he's not bound by space and time. You were with him already before anything was created. So if he's not, if you're, you were already with him, then you've always been with him. He was just preparing a place for you to come into. Do you get this? God just didn't happen to go through the newspaper one day and say, I think I'll create the earth. <laughs> he just, <laughs> no. Remember, he is not. Of, we've got to come into the arena of time and space. We've got to come into the arena that we are in God and with God and that we were with him before he even decided to create the universe. He prepared the universe for me and you. Right? Then Jesus comes, gives us the spirit of Christ so we can get filled with the spirit to get to the door that will restore us into the eternal presence. Didn't he tell his disciples, I go to prepare a place for you again? So he created the earth. He created the whole universe for us. He prepares a place in the Garden of Eden for man. First prepared it for Lucifer and his sons, known as angels. They fell. He put man in place as the keeper. They fell. Jesus came, went to hell, took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Hello? And gave us keys to bind and loose and kick butt on the devil. The keys of knowledge, revelation, and rhema. And allowed us by the Spirit of Christ, who is the eternal presence of God, to dwell in us that we can stay filled and come to the door where we can access all things. But self cannot get in there. Sin cannot get in there. Pride cannot get in there. Anything that is attached to this world will not allow you access into this area. That's why we're coming constantly to the end of self. Because God is trying to bring us into this other place. Are you hearing? Okay, let's go a little further. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us, remember, if he predestined us, he already came and set it up. <laughs> he predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of His grace by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. Verse 7. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, which He made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure by which He purposed in Himself, that in the dis dispensation of the fullness of times He might gather together in one, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So you and I were predestined. 
So if we are predestined, it means he already came and set things up. He's come and gone. Did you ever hear of deja vu? Well, that's what the world calls it. But see, in that realm, you are already here. Because you're not bound by space and time. See, if you're truly in Christ, in that arena where God is trying to get you, you are not bound by space and time. It says that you are blessed with every spiritual blessing. Where? In heavenly places. Where? In heavenly places. So when God, before he created everything, you were in him. So when he went and created everything, you were in him. Everything was set. Everything was done. Everything. Everything was done. So you were in him. Then he released you because he went and prepared a place. And, and in this realm that you were released and brought into the natural realm, to become rulers, to be trained up by his spirit and to have access into the eternal presence. See, so what you call deja vu is because you've already been there. In him. So there's a place where you and I can access and go anywhere. We are not time travelers. We're just offsprings of the eternal presence that allows us anywhere. Anywhere. Not by time, but by relationship. <laughs> In him who was, is, and ever be was omnipresent. You know what that means? You are omnipresent. Why? Because you are in Him. If you are truly in Him, you are omnipresent. That means past, present, and future. Are you not His offsprings? It doesn't mean that you are God's. It means you're in His image and likeness. Because God cannot duplicate Himself. Okay, so we are omnipresent. He blesses us with every spiritual blessing, Right? Restoring us, giving us everything. Walking in His Spirit. Commands. Listening to His commands. All right? He restored us and gave us eternal, uh, and gave us every spiritual blessing. That means walking in the Spirit, obeying the commands that bring supernatural above the natural. So by obeying God and the commands that He gives you by the Spirit, it allows you to walk in the Spirit, doesn't it? By walking in the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit allows you to have access to the eternal presence. So being obedient to these things is what allows you access to the eternal presence. So you must obey the commands of the Spirit to walk in the Spirit, which allows you access to the eternal presence. So if you're one that's getting filled with the Spirit but not obeying God, you will not have access to the eternal presence. Because being filled with the Spirit of God allows you to the door. That's why he says, it is written. Many of what? And those who see, but they can't see. Those who hear can't hear. And God has prepared for you. But they're delivered to you and brought to you by the Spirit of the living God. That you may have understanding. So you are already. You're just fulfilling now, what everything was already done. That's why you can walk around and go, it's already finished. Why? Because he finished it. That's all you're doing is walking it out now, aren't you? See, what you're trying to do is get people that have been bound into the temporary realm and get them into the other realm where they have access to all things. Now, there's something important because people don't realize that even in the garden... For Adam and Eve to maintain the eternal presence he had to eat of the tree of eternal presence. So they still, because they were not gods, they were in his image and likeness, so they had to constantly eat of the eternal presence of God. So they ate the tree of life that maintained them. But when they ate of the tree of death... The eternal presence left them, but they could still eat of the tree of eternal presence and maintain a wicked state. See, the one thing the serpent didn't tell them was that they'd become like the serpent. See, he told them that they'd become like God, knowing good and evil. Because the serpent had a past. But Adam and Eve 
didn't have a past because they were in God. Do you understand that? So they weren't bound by time or space, but the serpent was. Because Lucifer was created in time. Are you hearing? Adam and Eve didn't have a past. They were always with God in spirit, in the eternal presence. So when God released them and brought them forth, he took matter and breathed in them and gave them the eternal presence and dressed them with his eternal presence. But when they lost it, now they were going to die. Now listen. So by walking in the spirit and obeying the commands that God gives us, we go above the natural realm called supernatural. And this allows us to travel what the world calls time. But we're not traveling in time. We're traveling in the spirit realm. So you actually are time travelers. Just like the prophets were time travelers. They prophesied of things that were coming. Remember, people even prophesied of things that were when he talked about the world being in the world and the water and so forth. Do you understand that? Ezekiel, Isaiah, they all prophesied about the sun coming and the king and the kingdom coming. Most of them didn't even know what they were talking about. But they had access and they're around. Why? Because the eternal presence came upon them and they spoke about things that were, that are, or to come. They didn't even realize it themselves. But they were time travelers. Not bound by time. Remember, Moses was in the eternal presence of God and there was no time. He went in there, said hello, thank you, whatever, and fell on his face and thought he was in there five minutes. The next thing he knew it was 40 days. In the eternal presence of God. No time. No space. Go to Ephesians 2, in verse 4. Is everybody okay? You know, did you ever think about why you have to sleep? You don't belong here. You got to sleep to regenerate. Why? Because you don't belong in this realm. Or we would just stay here forever. We tried. <laughs> and failed. <laughs> I ain't never going to sleep. Yeah, right. See, so we have to sleep to regenerate because we are actually spirits. And the Bible says that knowledge is revealed while you sleep. What kind of knowledge? Eternal knowledge. <laughs> you know, what people take sleep just like, oh, yeah, well, I mean, we're, we're brought up. Well, yeah, you got to sleep. The baby sleeps all day long, eats until it gets this amount of age, you know. Sleeps four hours, gets up, eats, go back, sleep four hours. Until, why is it sleeping? To constantly regenerate. To constantly regenerating its spirit. It can't, because it's not, first of all, it's not accustomed to this realm. You know, do you remember your first cigarette, or your first drink? It tasted like garbage. But everybody else did it, so you forced yourself. I mean, you had to become accustomed to a certain taste. And eventually you became a part of it. See, so you and I, we were trained by darkness to serve darkness when we were born into this world. But we didn't belong here. Never did. Adam and Eve did not belong in the realm of death. They belonged in the realm of eternity. So that's why you sleep. To regenerate. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4, would you read it with me? But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved and raised up together. You were what? Raised up together. So when Christ died, you died with him. When he rose up, you rose up with him. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard for our peanut brains to get all this stuff, you know? It's just too much for me, I know it. And made us sit together. Now look at verse 6. Read it with me. Come on. And raised us up together and made us. Say made us. Say he made me. He made me, man. Sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are sitting in a heavenly place right now. You're sitting right next to daddy. Right there. You are already there. But why am I here? Because you're just a dream. One day you'll wake up out of this place. But in the meantime, let's go to the other place we belong. In the spirit. 
See, so the devil's going to do everything he can to try and keep you in this realm of death. No matter what. Anger, hatred, bitterness. All of these things entangle you here. Anything to keep you here, why? Because you are now in a temporary realm. He does not want you to access the eternal realm because then you're a danger to him. You're a danger to him. See, God begins to give you visions about things to come. Well, why would God do that? Because he's just preparing the attack of Satan's kingdom. Rescue. Whatever it may be. The Spirit tells us things to come. That we may have eyes to see and ears to hear the deep things of God. See, but the one thing that keeps people from it is themselves. The enemy would try to entangle you in everything. It's amazing how many people are still fighting for their life and they gave their life to the Lord. Why are you fighting for your life? Stop. You'll never get in that realm if you keep fighting for your life. Don't prove yourself. Don't get sucked in a meringue. Don't respond to evil. Tie a bow tie in your tongue. You might as well make it look good because it can't say nothing good. Paint it red. <laughs> Whatever it takes, stop allowing the enemy to keep you in the temporary realm. Let's go on. Ooh. Verse 8. Are you ready? For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his what? We're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? Good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should what? So he did it beforehand, didn't he? Another thing he prepared for us. He made us sit together in heavenly places, blessed with every spiritual blessing. We are seated in an omnipresent state by walking in the spirit of Christ, obeying the commandments. And by doing these things, the manifestation of the supernatural will come. You know, it's amazing how many people do not want to walk in supernatural. They do not do the things. God is always trying to get us into the area where supernatural will manifest. But all the things of supernatural are against the natural. Do you remember when the Lord told uh, them that one guy came up to him and he said, listen, uh, I do the commandments, I pay my tithes, I do this, I do that, and I do everything. And the Lord said, good. Give all your money to the poor. <laughs> Again, I was threw up. Almost passed out, man. Give my money to the poor. Are you kidding me? No way. I, 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 I can't do that. Bummer. I prevented him access. He couldn't follow. Money is the most stumbling block I've seen in individuals in this realm. It's incredible. It's one of Satan's arenas of deception because money gets people things. Wow. People still, there are people that don't tithe. If God said, see, God was trying to bless this guy tremendously. He said, just give it all. Give it all up. No, man, I need this. No, just give it all. Give it to the poor. And I, I'll show you a great. Let me show you something. You, you, you. No way. I can't, I, I'm sorry. I can't trust you. I, I, I need this. I need this for this. I need this for that. I need this for this. See, individuals claiming, claiming to be believers but really can't trust God. It doesn't allow them that access. Shuts it. Bam. See, God is always trying to get us something. But he's trying to get us in the area. He gives you the key. Those are supernatural commands. You know? You, you, people get blessed with things. Gifts. Somebody comes along and gives you a $100,000 check. And they don't tithe. Well, I didn't work for it. It was given to me. Why, you idiot? Don't you want God's blessing? You know, when you inherit something, if you haven't tithed off of it, you need to. Why? Because you're stealing from God. Uh, do, you, do you understand? These are ways that we walk supernaturally. Sowing supernaturally. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Supernaturally. See,
the carnal, the voice of the stranger says, look, you can't wait any longer. <laughs> and they go, yeah, you're right. I can't wait any longer. I got to just do this. God's forsaken me. God's not going to do this. God's not going to do that. See, still too alive to self. You can't trust God. God can't trust you. But he's trying to get us to walk supernaturally. Walk in the supernatural. Have access to the eternal presence. Be able to see that which was, is, and is coming. But everything in the natural realm will prevent you from seeing it. It will re-blind you and keep you. I'm telling you, we are in our arena right now in a stage of position of the Spirit that we've got to stop acting like children and start acting like servants. Men and women of God that we've been called to be. Let's go to verse 19 for a minute. Would you read it with me? Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Is everybody there? Verse 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. Read it with me, please. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought and imagination into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So here we are again about the imagination. The word imagination carries the word image. Your imagination is the window to the eternal realm. That's why you must keep it clean. Why? Because that's where God is going to allow you to see that which was, is, and is going to come. Not false and goofy imaginations. God will use the imagination for you to get to a place. It can even be why you're awake and standing. It doesn't mean anything about uh, sleeping. It can happen while you're sleeping, whatever. Does everybody understand? So we must keep that clean. That's why you must cast down thoughts and imaginations. They will come against the knowledge of God. So with doubt against the knowledge of God would fear anxiety stress anger bitterness anything associated with the natural realm you know why do people get angry protect fear fear of what fear of losing control fear of not having fear of losing why do people do so many goofy stupid things because it's all associated with self that's all it's about you know the enemy just throws what he can at you But if we grasp it and we say, okay, because we've not come to the end of self. That's why the anointing is to bring us to the end of ourself. That's why it's important to stay filled with the Spirit of God to come to the end of your self. That's why it's important. You know, we we have the teaching, the um, emotional attachments. But you know what? You've got to do them and then maintain them. It's not a one-time event. It's constant. Deliverance. People go through deliverance and lose it. Why? Because they don't maintain it. They get lazy. They listen to the voice of the stranger. They don't cast anything down that's according to the voice of the devil. They just agree with it. Yeah, okay. Become zombies. Then they listen and they, they become a puppet to the devil and they're crying to God, Oh God, why haven't you done this? Why haven't you done that? He said, Why haven't you done this? What do you mean? I gave you everything. Remember, he paid the price. That's why the Bible says Jesus is the door. How is he the door? You get filled and you get to the door. You enter the eternal realm. We've got to stop pleasing men and start pleasing God. Why? Because people will lose the fear of God. Let me tell you, when you lose the fear of God, you lose the presence of God. And I'm talking about the eternal presence, the person. 
I'm not talking about just his presence. I'm talking about the person. I'm not talking about goosebumps or chills or hoo-hoo-hoo or hallelujah. I'm talking about the person. Because there's a presence of the person that you know he's with you. You can see him. You can sense him. You can hear him. There's a presence where there's a constant communication in the spirit realm with no words. That's where he wants us to be. We must keep that imagination. It is the window of the omnipresent. Are you hearing? It's the window of God's omnipresence where you can see that which was, is, and to come. And it's our responsibility to keep it clean and uncontaminated. Remember, Jesus said, whoever eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood, right? Why? Because we're constantly eating. Those are the ones who have eternal life. Why? Because they're eating of eternal things. So the devil's going to try to get you to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. How? Through the voice of the stranger. Believe me, the tree's not just going to kind of pop up in front of you and have, you know, candy-coated apples. He's going to try and get you to eat by feeding you fear, doubt, unbelief, want. The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, if he's truly your shepherd, it means you're in his presence. If he's not your shepherd, you're out of his presence. Go to Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? Spirit. So who's trying to get you in the flesh? The devil, the temporary realm. Why? Then you're not free. You're not free. You can't see. You can't hear right. And the only thing you start doing it is then it's looking to be fulfilled by the natural realm for fulfillment, but it can never fulfill you. It's only temporary. Everything in this realm is temporary. For those who live according to the flesh set their what? Minds and the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So if you can't please God, it means that you, the presence isn't there either. Do you understand? Remember, the devil's going to try to do everything he can to keep you in the temporary realm. So that you do not excess. He wants to keep you bound by space and time. Bound by space and time. People count the days. Yes, yes, I don't, know. don't count days. You're not bound by the days. You're to be bound in the spirit. You're bound where? In the spirit. Whoa. Go to James 1. Come on, we want to get into this eternal presence of God and become time travelers. James chapter 1 and verse 2, would you read it with me? My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. For some of you, you feel like you're falling into various trial. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. <laughs> okay, faith is connected to the spirit realm, right? So what are you being tested for? Where are you at? Where are you at? Did you ever talk to somebody? They, yeah, I've been a believer this many years and I'm doing this, this, and whatever. And they say all kinds of things. It's like, man, where are you at? In other words, what realm are you in? What realm are you in? Where are you at? Are you in the supernatural realm? Are you in the eternal realm where the supernatural, where you can trust God to do everything? Or are you in the natural realm where you can't trust God and you got to do it all and fight for your life? Where are you at? This is what the test is right here. It's a test of where you're at. Not the test of faith. It's a test of where you're at. But let patience have its what? Perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete in what? Lacking nothing. In the eternal realm, you lack nothing. In fact, it says count it all what? Joy. The joy of the Lord is your what? Strength. And in the presence of God is fullness of joy. 
See, so the testing comes to us and says, where are you at? What realm are you in? What realm are you in? And the Holy Spirit begins to tell you that. Where are you at? Then he do that to Elijah. What are you doing here? It's like, where are you at, man? You just killed all those prophets and you booked and came over here. Where are you at? Sometimes you need to look in the mirror and go, where are you at? Where are you at? Are you in the spirit realm, the eternal realm, or the natural realm? Where are you at? Go to Revelation 12. Remember, when you're in the wrong realm, there's no fear of God. You just shoot your mouth off, you do whatever. There's no fear of God. Why? Because the presence of God is gone. But when the presence of God lifts, guess who shows up? The wrong presence. See, you'll know what realm you're in by your own fruit. Where are you at? Are you really trusting? Where are you at? Are you still fighting for your life? Still trying to prove yourself? Where are you at? Why? Because by getting filled brings you to the door. The door allows you into the eternal presence. You know, there are spirit-filled believers who never touched the eternal presence yet. They've come to the door many times, got good bumps and walked away. But there's an eternal presence in the walk where his presence is his person. Revelation 12 and verse 7. And war broke out into heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and the strength of the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who was accused, who's accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies, and they did not love their lives unto death. They overcame by the blood. Why? Because the blood allows you access to the eternal presence by obedience. The testimony of what you have seen God do through Christ Jesus in you. Now, Revelation 21. We're going to close here. I'm going to have to skip some scriptures. But I just want you to understand the importance of when the fear of God is gone, so is the presence. You hear me? Revelation 21, verse 22. Then you got to cry out for that presence to come back. And verse 22. But I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. And the city had no need of the sun or the moon or the shine. In it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is the light. This is the, for the new heavens and the new earth that come, the new Jerusalem that come down. And the nations of those who say who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there. So you won't ever have to sleep again because you'll be in eternal presence. Its gates shall not shut. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of all nations into it. But there shall be by no means enter anyone at anything at any time that which defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. In chapter 22, in verse 12. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are what? Dogs. Hello? What's a dog? Satan's children, aren't they? Demon-possessed individuals. But outside there are dogs, sorcerers, and sexual immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. 
I, Jesus, sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star, and the spirit and the bride say, come. Who's the bride? We are. And let him who hears say, come. And let him who thirsts, come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Freely. So there's a place that the Lord is trying to get us to. Where are you at? You need to start asking yourself this. Where am I at? And I always go to who told me that and where would you come from? Use the things that have been given to you. Don't put them on the side. Jesus said something very important. He said, come and learn from me. Learn. Freedom is learned. Access is earned. Use it. Time is running out, and God wants to get us in these places so we can access all things and not be left into this temporary, stinky realm. It's the realm of death. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray, Lord, that the seeds will be imparted to grow and bear fruit for your glory, and that revelation will be manifested, and that you would begin to reveal to your people the eternal realm with the eternal presence of past, present, and future that they may intercede and access to bring destruction to the kingdom of darkness and expansion to the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Be blessed.